Hello there. I would like to share with you today the story of the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. You know, the first thing I'd like to share with you, though, is this lady, Beatrix Potter, who lived long ago. One of the most beloved storyteller, author, and illustrator for children. And you know, she did a lot, or she did her own uh, watercolor illustrations with paints. And uh, she had a time getting them published back in her day, but she finally did and is now, like I say, one of the most beloved children authors and illustrators. Her most famous tale, I believe, is this one, The Tale of Peter Rabbit, but she wrote many others. Let's read this one together and think of the story and the lesson. Look at those whimsical and beautiful watercolor illustrations. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Porter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit, one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there, and he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket under her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans and then he ate some radishes. And then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. There's a picture of a little bird and a cabbage. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him.
and he rushed into the tool shed and he jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath the flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Achoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. And tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all round. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out and over the stone doorstep carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at, at him. And Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across, straight across the garden, but he came. He became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter and beyond him was the gate. Aha, Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Of course, those were the shoes and jacket he had lost. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got back to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed. 
and made some camomile tea. And she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. And I hope you were listening and hearing the lesson of the story, how important it is to obey your parents, to obey mom or dad. In this case, it was mother listening and obeying the good bunnies who were obedient. Turned out all right for them. But the disobedient Peter it did not turn out so right for him, did it? And he lost out and was not happy at the end. Maybe tomorrow he'll do better. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. If you liked it, go ahead and click like and be looking for more videos. And remember, just as we can learn something from this story, let's remember to learn something new every day.